Hey everybody, it's Sarah back with some Euclidean geometry in GeoGebra. In my last video, I showed how to use the point, point on object, intersect, and uh, midpoint tools. And I also uh, demonstrated the line and segment tools um, and showed how some of the algebra and graphics view and properties work. So if you haven't watched that video, definitely check that out. Before I get into some of the fancier line tools, um, sort of the, the GeoGebra shortcuts, um, I really feel like we need to talk about circles. So that's what this video is going to focus on, is circles. So the... I would say the the most common po uh, circle tool that I use is the circle with center through point tool. And just like with my regular point tool where I can just kind of click and blah, 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 put wherever points I want, um, I can do the same thing and delete those. I can do the same thing here. I can click a point that defines the center of my circle and then click another point to define the radius. Um, most of the time um, we want those points already defined. So let's say I have a point at the origin um, and I didn't show this last time because this is sort of an advanced tool but if I want to put a point at the origin and know that it's at the origin I can click and then edit the coordinates or I can use my little input bar down here and type either just zero comma zero in parentheses and GeoGebra will automatically name the first point capital A, um, or I can name it what I want it to be in the input bar, and for instance, type B equals um, one comma zero. So that's a way um, to get two points. So I'm gonna use my scroll wheel to zoom in here. Um, and remember, I can right click and hide the axes in the grid to get rid of those. So let's say I want a circle um, centered at the origin um, and with radius one. So radius defined by the distance between points A and B. So I'm gonna select my circle um, with, whoops, with center through point tool. This is the, the default top tool. And then I can click point A and then point B and that defines circle C. Um, and if I right click and go to my object properties, then in your basic definition, you can see if I just type circle A comma B, that's gonna give me a circle with center A and radius AB. So that's uh, one way to create a circle. Then let's say um, I have some other point over here. Um, so GeoGebra is gonna automatically name that C because that's my next um, capital letter variable available. Let's say I want another circle that's exactly this size centered at C. So that's where um, the compass tool can come in handy. So I can either click the center and radius of a circle that I wanna copy, or I can just click on that circle and then click on where I want it to be centered. So that's a pretty cool thing um, if you're trying to copy um, the same radius circle a bunch of places. Um, circle with center and radius um, is a useful tool if you're dealing with precise distances. So let's say um, I know I want a circle centered at B and I want it to have radius five then I can use that tool. Now, mo again, most of the time I'm using geometry that isn't based on distance, right? I'm defining points based on lines, lines based on points um, rather than specific distance values. But if that's something um, that you need, that's an option. Um, now, this isn't um, a I would say a, a geometry tool that most of us use when we're constructing by hand, um, but it is a Euclidean geometry fact that three points define a circle. And in fact, um, three points define um, 
a triangle, right? And th they define the circle that passes through those three vertices of the triangle. So this is like a, a circumscribed circle about a triangle. So if I select my circle through three points tool, um, and I've got these three points A, B, and C, if I click A, then B, then C, GeoGebra finds the circle that passes through those three points. This is something I use a lot if I'm constructing a lot of tangent circles, like if I'm drawing like Apollonian gasket or um, some like Gothic tracery, um, something like that. Um, I would say those are kind of the big, um, the big ones. Um, these other guys are useful if you just want arcs visible. Um, so for example, let's say um, I only want the arc visible from A to C. I'll use this circumcircular arc tool. And I have to go in a counterclockwise direction. Um, so if I click A, then B, then C, that highlights that arc. So for instance, let me hide um, that circle. You can see just that. If instead I had clicked C, then B, then A, oh, just kidding, that one. <laughs> um, yeah, that one's fine. Um, let me do something really quickly. Um, I'm going to find the center of that circle. So there's a, a geometry rule that says um, a line that is perpen a perpendicular bisector of a chord passes through the center of the circle. So if I draw two perpendicular bisectors of chords, I'll get the center of my circle. Um, so anyway, <laughs> that found the center of my circle. I'm just going to hide these lines because they're not important. All right, so yeah, so I guess the circumcircular arc, um, as long as you're selecting three points, you can go clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, the circular arc tool, though, for sure, um, you want to select your center and then two points. So if instead of selecting A, then B, which is counterclockwise around there, um, if I say, for instance, select D and then C, then B, it gives me this arc um, outside of there. So I can highlight that in red um, so you can kind of see what that does. So that's a circular arc. Um, semicircle kind of basically does the same thing. Um, so basically what this is doing, like if I select B then C, um, it's drawing a semicircle as if BC was the diameter of a circle. Um, you know, you can do the same thing with, with sectors. Um, so like if I do, so the circular and circumcircular work the same way as the circular arc and, and circumcircular arc. Um, so if I do, for instance, circumcircular sector, um, then I'm going to click, um, let's say, A, then B, then C, and it gives me um, that little sector that passes through those three points. Um, I wonder, yeah, so it works the same way, clockwise or counterclockwise. Um, but if I do just the one where I select the center, if I go <laughs> counterclockwise, so C, then A, um, it's going to select the, the outside. So, whereas if I had selected A, then C, it would have given me this piece of the pie. So there's my circle tools. We're going to need those in order to understand why these different line tool works. So I'll do that in my next video. Thanks.